All right, this is Big T. Welcome back to Young America. Today, we're going to be talking about something very important and sometimes, honestly, kind of boring, unfortunately. We're going to be talking about censorship. So, hold up. After the break, we're... So imagine you're back in fifth grade, you know, fourth, fifth grade, whatever it is, you're in elementary school and you're on the playground and you're playing box ball. I don't know if you any guys played box ball, but imagine you're on the box ball court in elementary school and you need to, uh, I mean, box ball, something that's cool thing about box ball is that usually you make your own decisions when it comes to calling. There's no referee in box ball, you know, it's, if the ball bounces out of the box, you have to call it. And sometimes it's kind of close. And, you know, people cheat a lot, especially when you're, you know, a little kid, when you're, you know, third, fourth, fifth grade. That's when I was, you know, playing box ball a lot. You know, kids cheated a lot and everyone hates a cheater, right? You know, and I, you know, I, I don't remember how much I cheated. I probably cheated at times if I thought someone else was cheating. I'm not going to lie about that, um, but it's not right. But now imagine this. You're playing box ball against your worst enemy. You're playing box ball against a kid that you just fucking hate. Like, this kid is just a fucking dick. Like, and it comes to nine-year-olds, like, he's the ultimate fucking dick of nine-year-olds. Like, he's like the Hitler of nine-year-olds in your eyes, okay? And, you know, I'm kidding. I'm exaggerating, obviously. But pretend, you know, you're nine years old, and you just fucking hate this kid. You're playing him in box ball, and he cheats all the time, right? So he's constantly cheating. He's not that good at box ball, even, but, like, you know it's going to be tough to beat him because he's probably going to cheat. Now imagine, he hits a ball, and it's on the borderline, and it just barely hits that line. And the ball's in. And you call it out. What do you, what would you feel? Maybe in the moment you might feel happy, but what would you feel five minutes later when you think, oh, would you think, oh, I beat that kid, yay, or do you think, well, shit, I want to, I should have beaten him fair and square. What would make you feel better? Would it make you feel better if you beat him fair and square, or would it make you feel better if you just cheated back? Again, even if he's already cheated, what would make you feel better? I think I know the answer to this question. Now, you're probably wondering, what does this rant about box ball have to do with censorship? Well, here's my answer. Look, in some cases, and I would argue that in a lot of cases, you know, there is no objective standard for what is totally moral and what is not. But in some cases, I definitely can say that there are, okay? I'm not, I don't want to get all philosophical here, but like, let's use the extreme example like people always use. Let's say that this nine-year-old kid, instead of this not being a kid being a nine-year-old kid you hate, let's say that this kid is literally a Nazi, okay? So this kid is literally a Nazi, and he is saying, you know, he's making videos talking about, you know, why he likes Nazism or whatever the fuck he's talking about, okay? There's two ways you can beat this guy, right? Well, there's three ways. One is violence, but, you know, assuming that he's not being violent yet, at least, there's two ways you can beat him. One is you can censor him. And one is you can, you can censor him, you can take away his channel, you can make sure he never is able to talk to anyone ever again. Two, you beat him fair and square by showing that this guy is not only a fucking asshole, but he's a fucking idiot. He just does not know what the fuck he's talking about. Which way is fair? Which way is playing the game right and making sure that you're going to beat him? And again, remember, this guy does not play the game right. He doesn't care. I, I get that. But which way is going to make you feel much better about it? The onlookers, if you censor him, they're going to have doubts. They're going to say, well, if this guy has to cheat too, is he really any better than maybe this Nazi guy isn't so bad? Maybe this guy you're fighting against, maybe he's not so bad. And if you beat him fair and square, if you go right into that court, you hit that box ball, you spike it at him and you show him that this guy is a fucking idiot then you know you've won, and that feels good. All right, so today I'm going to be talking about why censorship is for losers. And um, unfortunately, this is an issue when you talk, when you know, we hear people on YouTube talking about censorship in YouTube. Unfortunately, it's an issue that can be kind of boring. Like, I, I respect Tim Pool. I, I have respect for him, and I agree with him on this, on this position very much. But I cannot gonna lie, it can get really, really boring to hear Tim Pool go on and on about SJW censor this, SJW censor another thing. Like I'm not gonna lie, it can get a little boring when you hear people going on about it. Uh, it can also be boring when you hear the pro censorship people talk, and I'll get to that in a minute. But it's unfortunate too, because you'll see all these you know memes and stuff and Reddit where you hear uh, my phrase peach, my phrase peach, 
uh, you know, censorship, blah, 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 and it's to the point where censorship has almost become, it's become a right-wing talking point, almost, or at least that's how people see it as. But that's ridiculous. Like, the fact that it is, it has become a right-wing talking point is something that people on the left, the people that actually care about free speech, should, and not just when I say the left, I mean, you know, every, a whole entire spectrum from, you know, liberals and moderates to, to, you know, people that are further left, all of them, they should be furious over the fact that this become a right-wing talking point, because this is an extremely important issue. Free speech is the most fundamental right that we can have to protect ourselves from an authoritarian government. And I'm not exaggerating a tiny bit when I say that. If we're not for the First Amendment, if we're not for free speech, there would be literally no protection from the government coming and arresting us over just, you know, something that we say. Something that we say criticizing them. And that's, that's been happening throughout all history. And unfortunately now, in uh, countries that are not the United States, we're seeing these laws go in the wrong direction, coming in on the side of censorship. And a lot of that has been because of the, you know, quote-unquote SJW type people. And I don't love to use that word because I think the word gets overused. But that definitely has played a role. I mean, you can't deny that. Um, you know, in England now, there are even, you know, some people, I think it's, it's only been a couple of examples, but some people in the UK have uh, literally been on trial for go, to go to prison for making offensive jokes. And in the EU, things are going in that direction. And certainly in China, they've been doing that for a long time. Now, what's offensive in China and what's offensive in the EU might be different, but it doesn't matter. The principle is the same. Uh, in the Middle East, certainly, when you follow dictators in the Middle East, you know, you criticize the government and, you know, boom, you're in jail. And honestly, that's a big marker of how you can tell a society is free and how free a society is, is how much free speech you have in that society. That's always been a big marker of how you can tell a society is free. You know, in the Soviet Union, you criticize Stalin, boom, you're sent to the gulag. Like, Curtis today, North Korea, you know, you criticize Kim Jong-un and he's going to send you to a labor camp. If in Nazi Germany, you were to criticize Hitler, he'd throw you in a concentration camp and you'd probably die. Like, this is, is a serious issue, and I, I think it's disgusting, honestly, how some people view this as some sort of, like, this is, like, my right-wing anti-SGW talking point. Ugh. I don't know why I'm making those weird noises. I don't know. It's just a terrible impersonation of, of some of these uh, some of these left-wing, you know, memers and uh, Redditors that you do see making this muffery speech argument. Um, and... And this, when I say left wing, I don't. I certainly am not applying this to everyone on the left. Um, there are people, you know, that are pretty far left, such as say Jimmy Dory or Kyle Kalinske, uh, Kim Iverson, who are you know pretty pro, pro free speech that are certainly end against YouTube censorship. And from what I know, I, I don't watch all their videos, but from what I know, they've pretty much consistently been on the side of more free speech in their videos, and that's great. But then on the other hand, you get people, and it's not just you know oh it's the corporate centrists. It's not just the corporate centrists. You'll get people on uh, say for example Sam Cedar is a big one, and that other guy I think is Michael Brooks is his name. Uh, Sam Cedar and Michael Brooks have been some very big advocates of censorship, and then you get Vox, which is trash. Um, and I can talk about that in a whole other video. Vox is fucking garbage. Anyway, uh, you know, Carlos Maza was the one who started that whole recent censorship debacle over an issue with uh, Steven Crowder. And I don't want to talk about the details behind that. That's I don't really care about the details behind that, to be honest. Um, but when you see these, you know, so-called progressive uh, YouTubers talking about, you know, how much they like censorship when it personally offends them or when they're talking about opinions that they don't agree with, first of all, so they don't know, you know, People like Sam Cedar, they're like know-it-all types. They don't—they act like they know what everything is morally right and morally wrong, and they don't. Okay, that's just like I hate when I don't like when people push, you know, a heart uh, this harsh moral standard on all of us. I don't like it when right-wing people do it, when evangelicals do it, um, or people that want you to, you know, stand for the flag do it. As I said in my other video, that that think it's like so important that you must stand for the flag, uh, stand for the anthem. I don't like when people like that do it. And I really don't like it when people on the left want you to, you know, oblige by their strict politically correct moral code. And I know, again, it can be kind of come, it's become a right-wing talking point to be, like, anti-politically correct. And I do think that there is right-wing political correctness. And I do think in certain cases that, you know, you have people like Dave Rubin that kind of, that's the only issue they really know much about, where they're on the right side of that issue. They know what they're talking about in that issue. But then they've also kind of taken up other right-wing ideas that they don't really know anything about. And so, in a sense, that that's, that can be kind of an issue, too. But I don't want to go into too much of a rant on those, uh, you know, those side tangents. Um, this is an issue which, for the most part, I agree with what is seen as the more mainstream right-wing position at the moment. Uh, and it's unfortunate that that is seen as the more, you know, I shouldn't say right-wing, it's just maybe more conservative position. But really, it's, it's not about right versus left. It's about libertarian versus authoritarian. And if you are willing to give your rights away, not just to a government, but also to a corporation, because let's be honest, I get that private censorship is not the same thing as literally going to jail for censorship. But when you're already talking about private censorship, 
when you want a censorship, you just don't want to admit it, okay? You might, you know, someone, a progressive, someone on the left might be thinking, oh, well, you know, we can give up our rights, our right to free speech to, you know, YouTube. YouTube can control what we say, but, you know, I don't want the president to control what we say because I don't like him, but, you know, I, I'm totally fine with YouTube controlling what we want to say. But what they really mean is, you know, well, if we got the right government in charge, well, then, you know, why not just do that a few years down the line? You know, I mean, really what you're doing is you're saying, we're going to give up, you know, some of our free speech. It, you know, it's just going to be slight amount, and then eventually, you know, eventually we're going to, we're going to, they're going to crack down more, because that's what happens when you start giving up, you know, some of a right, it's going to keep going down that, that slippery slope, it's just going to keep happening. And first, also, when it comes to private censorship, who elected these people, who, like, who the fuck gave them the rights to, to take away, I mean, if you're a progressive, you should be, you should be fucking uh, pissed off about a private corporation trying to take away your free speech, I'm sorry, like, and I have nothing against businesses freely making money, I have nothing against YouTube and Facebook, because they are businesses that became successful, and that is their right, but who gave them the right to take away our free speech? Uh, and yeah, you could want you can you can make you can argue that you know they can set their own guidelines and stuff like that. But I'm sorry, we're in America. We have the First Amendment. We have a great First Amendment. As I said, I think it's you know the most important thing that we have when it comes to our rights in America is the free is the First Amendment is the right to free speech and uh, freedom of assembly and freedom of the press, freedom of religion, uh, etc. And you should be. You should be like pretty fucking scared that some of these corporations want to say, oh, well, no, well, you can't say what you want to say in this website. And people always bring up the most extreme examples. Now, when it comes to something that's like direct incitement to violence or doxing, that's a little different. You know, that's I don't even really consider that speech. I consider that like, you know, if you want to use the box ball analogy, I consider that like someone getting out of their box and trying to tackle you. You know, they're not playing by the rules. They're not that's not free speech. That's them actually like going outside of their platform and trying to harass you. And that's totally different. But when it comes to just what they're saying, you know. I don't care how hard, again, some of the times it will be legitimately terrible people. I get that. But still, you can't just censor someone just because you don't like what they're saying. I don't care how horrible it is. It can be anything from a slight difference to opinion and how horrible it is. There's no way to exactly say, oh, this is, there's no scientific mathematical measurement of this is what's bad and this is what's not bad. So anytime you open things up to censorship, you open up sense of censorship for anybody. You might say, oh, well, that's not what's going to happen. But yeah, if you're in the left, you call for censorship you're probably going to get censored eventually too because it's going to come back and bite you in the ass because that's what happens whenever you try to take away rights to a select group of people. Then they'll just use it right back on you, okay? If you cheat just because someone else is cheating in box ball, nobody wins, okay? So bottom line, censorship is for losers and free speech is for winners. And if you're so afraid of losing, you shouldn't be playing the game. And I think it is great that we all have the opportunity to be here on a platform in the 21st century playing the game, whether it's politics, whether it's whatever it is you want to talk about. I think it's great that we have the opportunity to play the game, and I don't want any referee coming in and controlling who gets to play the game, who gets to express the opinions they want to express, who gets to say what they want to say. No, fuck that. We all have the equal opportunity to participate, whether it's YouTube, whether it's just in general society, or whether it's social media. We all should get the right to speak our opinions, and that's that. Signing out, this is Big T from Young America. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Young America. This video was brought to you by George Soros, because as you can surely tell, I am a globalist. I'm also a member of the Illuminati, the New World Order, the Skull and Bone Society, and whatever the fuck that weird Hollywood sex cult is, it's like NXVM or some shit. Uh, I would tell you more, but someone would probably kill me, so I gotta go. Peace, motherfuckers.